Well, hi there, folks. And welcome to this quick look at some of the new features on the Flight Radar 24 website redesign. The changes might seem subtle at first, but there's a lot going on under the hood here that should help you get more out of the site. So I'm going to walk you through some of the highlights. Up here to start, we have a most tracked flights feature, which is now available on the web interface. And if you want to take a look at any one of them, you just click it and it'll take you to that flight. And flight squawking 7600 or 7700 will be reflected here as well. Then you have the usual statistics. And don't forget, of course, that uh, you can take a look at what we've been tweeting, our blog posts, to stay up to date on everything to do with aviation while you're tracking. Moving along this arrow here works uh, just like it does on the app. So you just need to allow location services and it will center the map wherever you are in the world. And next over we have the settings button and that'll pull up a whole bunch of options. So first you have the map section where uh, you can move around between satellite, terrain, grayscale, whatever strikes your fancy. Brightness, day night line can go on and off. We can leave that off for now. And below that, you have some really cool overlays that are for premium users. So ATC boundaries, oceanic tracks, aeronautical charts, lots of fun stuff. And you can also turn on and off airport pins, change your aircraft icon size, aircraft labels on and off. You can also customize those labels here. Under visibility, that lets you filter out certain data sources. So if you wanted to only look at space-based ADS-B, for example, you could toggle everything else off. Down at the bottom, you can also uh, turn on and off aircraft that are on the ground, ground vehicles, gliders. Then over on the miscellaneous tab, you can change the time zone, how the clock displays, units of measure for temperature, speed, and you can also turn on and off the trail tooltip. And the trail tooltip, the way that works is if you have a flight selected, when it's on, that'll let you look at any portion of its track. You just hover over and you'll see basic info about the flight at that point. And moving along, the next handy button is for weather. Basic users have access to general weather information. For premium users, you can turn on and off all of these really nice overlays different radar feeds, precipitation, you can even go down here to uh, icing, clear air turbulence. And if we just jump over to North America, I can show you this North American radar. And this is high resolution radar, and it updates very fast as well. Next up, we have the filters button. And these options have actually changed quite a bit. So now, when you enter a filter, say for example, the aircraft type, for example, if we want to see what 737 MAX-8 aircraft are currently in the sky, it looks like over here it's just one, this Air Canada flight heading to Toronto. Now what happens is the filter will be saved down here, and then you can toggle it on and off. So if we had another, for example, the MAX-9, then we can have one or both on or neither and they'll stay there. Now, if you're unsure about uh, which codes to use for the various filter options, you can head to our linked blog post here for a guide to that. Uh, we'll also be covering this in a dedicated video more in depth soon, so stay tuned for that. If we go over to the playback button, you'll see this one is much improved now. Simple interface where you can go to whatever date and time you might desire. So for example, December 2nd of last year, three in the morning, start the playback. And you can control by this panel down here. Moving up to the right hand side then we have the new map controls. So these four arrows here, see that selecting this with the up and down arrows will show and hide the top menu bar. And if we use these over here, it will take us into a full screen mode. At the same time, if you click anywhere on the map, it will remove all the other panels. So what you can do with this is just really uh, narrow it down to just the map and the planes, nothing else. And all you have to do to get it back is to click on the map again. That brings us up to the new multi-select feature. And this is pretty fun. You can track up to six flights at once. And the basic flight info for each of these will show up in a little window over here. Altitude, ETA, registration, etc. And once you're in multi-select mode and you've got a few flights selected, if you click this button over here, it will hide every other aircraft other than the ones you've selected. 
Back in the View tab, we should also point out these premium features, the list, airport, and fleet. And these have all been overhauled, and they have lots of useful information. Here we have all the aircraft on the map. Here we can look at an airport, for example, London City. We'll see the arrivals and departures. And that just about covers everything. It's worth pointing out that the new design not only adds functionality, but also aims to make interacting with the site a lot more consistent across platforms. So moving between the desktop and the iPhone app, for example, it should feel very seamless. You should also notice that the site is faster and more responsive than ever. And importantly, we've made a lot of changes behind the scenes that are gonna make it easier to add new features going forward. We've got plenty in the works there, so stay tuned for those. And as always, happy tracking. Thanks for watching.